All right, good morning. It is 9.05. Welcome to the All About Real Estate Show here at CKXS, joined by Pete Ehler from Riverside Realty. How are you today, Pete? Good, Greg. Good to have you here today. Beautiful, sunshiny day again. Yes, it is beautiful out there. So we want to get it to the topic at hand here. There is an article that was written earlier this week in the Chatham Daily News in regards to the expansion of Wallaceburg and the growth of this community when it comes to building, real estate, homes, that sort of thing. Uh, Elwood Shreve wrote the article in the Chatham Daily News and it talked to you, reached out to you. Yes. Um, and wanted to talk to you about your thoughts on why there's no growth in Wallaceburg when it comes to building. Exactly. And he, so he reached out to you. Did he? Yeah, call he, you? he called me, he called me up and he just, which I don't know where, whether it was his thoughts or what, but he called me up and he just said, you know, he said, I, I don't understand why every other town in Chatham Kent has residential building going on except Wallaceburg. So he said, can you explain to me in your what, why you think that is basically that's kind of what he said and then we discussed it right which is interesting because we covered this topic back about four or five months ago and actually went on a tour around <laughs> yes. Wallaceburg taking a look at potential places where we could develop as a community and grow because growth is needed in this community and it just seems strange that we're the only community that's not and and it's not because people don't want to come to Wallaceburg well, that's the thing, right? So, so the first question, yeah, and we drove around with Mayor Caniff yeah. and you and I, and he drove around town, and I showed him some of the potential places. So the quest, the first question is always, you know, okay, is there a need, right? So, so is there a need for more residential homes in Wallaceburg? So some people may think no, and and you know, I mean, my opinion is there's a dire need. I mean, I, I see it every day. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, I look at it and say, okay, let's just say we had 100 homes, new residential units, new, new residential homes in the next two years. Let's just use that number, you know, 100 homes. And then I say, okay, what would that do for our community? And my thinking is, if, if, if I was the one in charge of saying, okay, this is what we need, I would say we need a variety of homes Everything, you know, from from homes for seniors, homes for, for you know, the growing family, first-time buyers, you know, maybe even maybe even units that are for rent, you know, that kind of thing. The whole, the whole mm -hmm. gamut. And, and I just think, for example, and I'll start at the top when I said the senior home. So there's so many seniors in our community today that are sitting in large homes, the family home that they raise their kids in. And I get calls probably at least once a week. And they say to me, you know, we don't want to leave Wallaceburg, uh, we, but we, we can't look after our large home any longer. We'd like to downsize. We'd like to get it in a one floor, you know, and, and easy to maintain. Mm -hmm. And they ask me, you know, do you have any ideas or suggestions? And what's happening is those people are leaving because they can't find anything here. So they're, they're saying, well... We can't, we can't find anything, so they go to Chatham. Maybe they find something in Chatham. Maybe they find something in Dresden. Maybe they go to Sarnia. But they're leaving. So, so the seniors, you know, number one, how it would benefit them. Number two is, you know, young families looking for family homes. You know, th there's just nothing for sale, you know. So, again, if, if you have kids that are in that age group that would like to stay here, where are they going to live? What are they going to buy? You know what, like, and and then, and then when they do want to buy something, there's one home, and there's you know mm -hmm. twenty five people looking to buy it. So so it's all these things that, and then you look at the community, and so you, so you start to look at the families, and now you look at the community in general, the businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure if you talk to those that are a part of the BIA or the Chamber of Commerce, they want growth. That's what businesses want in their community. When you think about what we've seen happen in the last two years, two new gas stations have come to town. We've had a new pizza place that opened up, another one that's coming, uh, new restaurants that have opened. Those businesses need expansion. They need growth. They're coming here because they see the potential in Wallaceburg. That's right. And they're ready for Wallaceburg to explode and start growing, but we seem to be landlocked. And 
we can't seem to grow with that. And I, before I go any further, I should probably mention, if you want to text in a comment, question, uh, during the conversation here, feel free to do so. We want to hear from you. 519-437-9991 is the text line number. Or you can call us and talk directly to Pete and, and share your thoughts. I mean, it's a conversation that, I mean, you're open for the conversation. Absolutely. You, you want to talk to people about it and what your thoughts are, what do you think is good, what do you think is bad. Uh, you can call our phone line at 519 519- Six two seven zero nine nine one. I'll say that number again. That's six two seven zero nine nine one. And share your thoughts. What do you What do you think should happen? Should we stay where we are? Should we grow? Or where do you want to go next as a community? So obviously, this is your program. Feel free to share with us uh, your thoughts on that. So back to your thought process. You you share this information. You share it with the uh, Chatham Daily News and. A lot of the comments were negative. They were, well, I, yeah. I'd say there was a lot of negative comments. I mean, which which is fine. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, I just my intention here, and we've had this conversation. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times on this show is that, and I've I've actually vowed to the people of Wallaceburg that I would keep pushing forward to get some growth in this town and to get some residential, you know, building happening in this town because we absolutely need it. So. So, I mean, you know, when I was, when, when Chad and Bailey News reached out to me, I just, I, I told them, I gave them, in my opinion, the facts of what's happening. And, and the bottom line is that, you know, we, we, we need the building. We have the, we have the demand to buy the homes. We have the people that would develop. I mean, I've had, I've got probably four or five different developers from all over the place that have reached out to me wanting to develop in Wallaceburg. I mean, we would have we would have died for this like ten years ago, mm-hmm. right? But the problem was ten years ago was the demand wasn't there to buy the home, or if it was, you know, a person couldn't build a home and resell it and make any money. Because that's the other thing in all this is, you know, let's face it. I mean, these developers, I mean they they have to make money, right? I mean, the bottom line, no matter who does what here, we have to make money. I mean, in, unless there's someone out there that's got all kinds of money that yep. just wants to house us all which is, you know if so, you find that person you know let me let me i'm sure this was a comment that i read on the the chatham daily news that this is going to benefit p daler this is going to benefit you uh, what do you say to that comment pete i would agree that yes will it benefit my business absolutely but it, it will. will also benefit <laughs> Other real estate businesses too. It won't well, be it'll, exclusive it'll benef- to it'll just benefit, you. It will benefit every person in this town. Right. Every single person. You know, the house. So we'll go back to the hundred homes. So we have a hundred new homes. That means let's say let's say in those homes there are you know two to five people living in every home. You know, so so you know whatever. There's X amount of new people because it isn't as if if we build a hundred homes, it's not as if oh well they're going to fill up and there's going to be a hundred empty homes. No. There's going to be more people. Right. More people means home hardware. You know, they shop at home hardware. They go to Rona. They go to Duchesne Paints. Mm-hmm. They go to the new liquidation store. You know, they listen to your radio. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, the other thing is schools, the pools, you know, the arena, the library, the, the, the parks, you the know. The things that have potential of you losing. Exactly. Like the library or an arena that needs to be renovated. When you have more people in town that are using these facilities, probably exactly. you're going to expand. And, you know, the hospital is probably. The hospital, exactly. One of the key messages, if, you know, 10 years ago we said, and imagine if you said this, well, Wattlesburg's just not growing. There's no need for a hospital in this community. Uh, as a, as the government, we've assessed it. There's no growth. Sorry, we're going to take that hospital away. Exactly. If, imagine if that was said, and then the answer to it was, well, then what, what do we do to grow? Mm-hmm. Well, we need we need you need more people in your community in order to sustain the hospital. That people would be like, well, let's do that. So I, you know, to go back to your comment about growth and you know how it prospers and how it helps small business and the people that live in this community, opportunities, jobs, selling your products, and all of those things. I think those are all key ingredients. We're, once again, if we're if you're just joining us, we're talking to Pete Eller from Riverside Realty uh, in regards to growth in Wallaceburg and what do you see uh, happening? Um, Wallaceburg new growth, a new native children's facility to no frills going up. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So I mean, there's there's a, there's a there's a very positive thing because I know 
myself, I mean, I have it firsthand. I mean, I've got four grandchildren and my two daughters, and they they both need daycare. It's very very difficult to find daycare, right? Mm -hmm. So so that so all that stuff. So you get more people. So then maybe it it justifies, you know, let's say a new daycare facility sure. opening up. You know, all these things they justify. That's the thing is, you know, I mean, the, the I I've heard from high school students that say, well, they don't they don't offer a lot of different variety of programs at, at the high school. Well, again, if all of a sudden you have 150 more students in that high school, it warrants to offer more programs, right? So, so this idea that, oh, well, you know, we're, we're do you know, I guess my intention is just to line my own pockets. I mean, again, sure. Will it, will it help my business? Of course it'll help my business. However, I keep saying it's going to help every single person in this town, including stabilizing rental rates mm -hmm. let's say you know and stabilizing home prices i mean everything and and the bottom line is we have the demand you know i want to keep our seniors here that have lived here their whole life they want to stay here you know i want to keep our kids here if possible i've had three major employers of this town in the last three weeks call me and say we're having a very difficult time filling positions because there's nowhere to live right Right. So, I mean, it, it, you know, and I know some people say, oh, we love the small town feel and we don't want it to grow. And I mean, I get some of that, but, but on the same token, you know, it's one of those deals where if you're not growing, it's very difficult to stand still. Right. If you're not growing, you're probably moving backwards. And if you're moving backwards, you're dying is the bottom line. And all these businesses that are around you, right. if, I mean, if you have 10 customers in a day instead of 20, and that continues, and all of a sudden you can't keep the doors open. And let's say five years from now, you know, half of the new businesses, there's empty buildings. Because, we, you know, you see that too. People build stuff, yeah. and it's great. And then three or four years later, it doesn't go. And now you got, you know, a bunch of empty buildings sitting around. And tax base, think about the tax base, additional tax dollars. So, you know, if we can, if we can have 100 new homes, you know, times three to $5,000 or whatever it is tax, that's going to help everyone that owns a home because maybe they won't need to increase the taxes. Agreed. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a whole package. And it isn't as if there's nowhere else that it's happening. Right. I mean, if I was sitting here, you know, preaching this and nowhere else was there any growth, <laughs> I'd be like, well, what are you talking about? It's everywhere. About? It, it's Tilbury. It's Chatham. It's Dresden. It's Blenheim. Everywhere around us is everywhere. certainly growing right everywhere. now. We'll, we'll take a break in the action here. We're talking to Pete Miller. Once again, if you want to talk and you want to share your comments, hey, we encourage you. We want to hear from you. Get your thoughts on how you see Wallaceburg going to the next step. Feel free to give us a call at 509-627-0991. Or you can text in your question to us at 437-9991. It's the All About Real Estate Show. It's 918. You're listening to CKXS with the police. 99.1 FM CKXS, we continue the All About Real Estate show today, talking about the expansion of Wallaceburg with Pete Taylor from Riverside Realty. He joins us today on the program. So you want to go to some of the questions here? Sure, or, go ahead. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, some of the questions we're getting uh, text in today here. Who is the provincial liaison that is not intervening and allowing expansion? And how is this not looked at as a mon monopoly? So... So what, what I'll do is I'll explain a little bit on how that actually works. So and I and I've been in conversations with planning a couple of times on this, but even though we're all Chatham Kent here, um, we we still have urban centers in Chatham Kent. So so the old what we used to call the town boundaries in Chatham Kent are still there. So so when it comes to to development, whether it be industrial, commercial, or residential. There, we have a call it a circle around our town here. Yep. So anything inside the circle is is sort of in queue to be developed. So one of our issues, I guess, is the fact that you know they're, they're, the people that own the land inside the circle at this moment don't seem to be real interested in developing it or selling it. Okay, fine. Um, so as far as to say, oh well, you know, there's really isn't a provincial body. Or, or a body at all, I don't think, that can come in and say, okay, Greg, you own this piece of property, you have to develop it. I, and, I, and I sort of agree with that theory of, yeah, if I own the land and I don't want to do something, I mean, as long as I'm not doing anything wrong on the land, mm -hmm. then I shouldn't have to. So then my question is, okay, 
how do we and we can't just jump over that line to the next piece of land and say okay well let's just develop this piece like that that can't you can't just do that well yeah because you would have farmland in the middle of a community well that's basically (laughs) the thing right they they need some organization on how they do that and the thing about it is is the only way you can do that is you have to go through quite a lengthy process like the municipality does and they have to do what they call a comprehensive review of of the plan um so which which ironically enough i mean chatham kent they do it once every five years they're actually just starting one they're just starting one. So I've, I've reached out to planning saying, okay, you're starting this plan. Let's just look at right. what do we need to do. So, so, so my comment would be we've, we've determined the need. We've kind of determined the problem of, you know, yeah, there is lands within here that don't seem to want to be developed by the owners. Well, then what do we do about it? Mm-hmm. So, so now I guess the next thing we do about it is, we either convince the owners to say, hey, okay, I get it, I'll sell or whatever, I'll develop. Or we say, well, well, I guess we need to go to the lands closest to maybe and say, all right, what about this piece or that piece? Right. What, you know? so, so again, it's, but the problem you have with all that stuff is it takes a long time. And, you know, I mean, in real estate, we all know that, you know, you don't know how long this demand will be out there. So if the demand... You know, we could we could go this route and take three to five years, three years, and by the time it's approved to, to actually build a house, the buyers are all gone, mm-hmm. right? So I, we don't know that. I mean, that so there are there are lands around us, so we should probably touch on that. There are some areas like right around Wallaceburg where we could build, but just nobody wants to give up the land. Is that no? What? Well, there's there within our urban yes. within our urban circle, there are definitely lands inside and passed as residential and and are are zoned as future development residential. They're already they're ready to go. I mean, there, there's there's a lot of steps already done. So definitely there's, I think I calculated, like, I'm going to say, just throw out, there's like 200 acres of total in, within our urban circle. Okay. So, um, where do I want to go next here? So I got, I got this question that's in regards to, so this is looking at the Brunsma area. Okay. Uh, where there's about what, 25 acres that's passed right now as potential residential. Yeah. It's, it's def that piece is probably the closest to developing because like it's ready, ready to, to go. go. Yeah, yeah that would be the, the, the most ready to go piece of anything in town. That if, behind Taylor's variety there. If I recall, there's actually a street that just opens to a field. Yeah, right. So you yeah. could just continue there. Uh, this question is about the uh, trails. Are there trails back there? Are there? Is there a walking area back in that mm, area? Is there anything? Uh, if there is, I don't know about it. So what about those? Would uh, I mean? And I'm sure that any sort of development is going to keep that in mind about parks trails yes, all totally, of that stuff yes so i think that's normally what would happen yeah as a matter of You'd fact maintain those. if you if if i look if i look at an overall planning map of wallaceburg there's you know part of that brooms my area behind brooms and subdivision yeah there's definitely there has to be in every in every subdivision or whatever or every phase right. there has to be some like park lands and so on and there is there is in there yeah the rule i mean they have to follow the rules and on that end right right somebody's asking it, also right about up. the south side what um the south side across the river is that not an area that could be developed well this so there's a there is a parcel of land that's um over on the end so we'll call it by the cemetery like between there's a parcel in there that that has just recently last fall it was sold um it had a plan of subdivision on it that has expired um, so that whoever bought that, I, I was told it was a developer from Windsor. Um, he's going to have to kind of start over and, and start, you know, again, he's going to have to, they say, I, I've talked to developers and developers say that if, if you have a future development piece of farmland, that's, that's, that's zone future development, it would be minimum two years before you're digging a hole for a house. How is that even possible? Yeah, what it's just, that? and it doesn't, you know what, it, oh, it, it doesn't seem to matter tape. where it is. Like I've talked to them from all over and it doesn't seem to matter where it is, but they say it's a two year where that's where, you know, that piece of, of, uh, behind brooms are there. I think that's a piece that is a lot closer to be ready to go. So, you know, that's why 
I just said, you know, if that piece was fully developed and they could put a hundred, like maybe I'm overestimating, but say they could put a hundred units or homes in there, right. it it's it's the closest to to being able to be done, you know, tomorrow, so to speak, and not have to, you know, th- two, three, four years down the road, right. So, well, the consensus I'm getting from all the messages, the text messages, and is that nobody seems to be against this. Like, it's, I think as the community, if you live in Wallaceburg, you kind of see it as, yeah, we need to do this as a mm-hmm. community. I, don't I mean, know what, I, we, I, you when know, I read the article from the Chatham Daily News and I see the posts and the messages that are there, that was quite negative. But I, was that outside the area that doesn't really see the situation that Wallsburg's dealing with, that it wants to grow but can't? Well, I think what it comes down to sometimes, you know, is 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 a lot of people don't they don't necessarily um, understand the complexity of of. Because one of the com- a lot of the comments was, well, just just you know, go to the next piece of land, go to the next. Well, that's not very simple. Like that is, and then so what happens is they do this comprehensive plan, <laughs> they decide that you know, okay, this would be a good idea to take you know this strip and that strip and you know and try to bring it in, and then they go through the whole thing. It's a it's a year process for them to do that. Right. Then they decide yes, council, you know, it all gets decided. And then they have to go to the province and they have the province has to okay it. And what happens is is the province looks at it and says, Okay, here's your circle. You want to expand that circle to, you know, other lands mm-hmm. and you're telling us you need those other lands because your town's growing. And then they look within the circle and they say, Well, what do you mean? There's two hundred acres within your circle that can be developed. Why would you need more? So now all of a sudden, let's just say the province says, no, you can't, no, you're not expanding. Until you fill up what you got inside your circle, you're not expanding. So again, the complexities of this, and we all know that when we deal with government, there's a lot of red tape and there's a lot of complexities, and it's not our municipality's fault for this. It's just the way it is. I really feel that all the the messages when I see what was posted after the news story was shared about expanding Wallaceburg and some of the negative comments were there, that I think once you walk somebody through step by step the what you're trying to accomplish and why you're trying to accomplish this, then I think most would understand that, yeah, you're just trying to grow the community. And if it grows, it's like you said earlier, it's better for our schools, it's better for our arenas, it's better for our libraries, it's incredible for our hospital. So I... Yeah. But- all in all, I mean, you know, I was born here. You know, my family immigrated here from Belgium in 1948. We've lived here, you know, our whole lives. Most of my family is here around Wallaceburg. You know, my wife's family is from Wallaceburg. You know, I, I guess, you know, I, I'm, I want Wallaceburg to grow. I want it to prosper, you know, and, and, I, and I've said on this show before, I vowed to the people of Wallsburg that I will do everything I can to keep pushing this forward to to you know to help our town grow to do what's good for the whole community and again sure is it good for my business yeah of course it is it's good for your business it's, right i yeah. mean it's good it's, for business in general it's good for all real estate business yeah well exactly mm-hmm. all business in general mm-hmm. so you know i mean if we think about if these businesses are prospering we have a few more people in town and the grocery stores are busier and then the grocery stores you know i had someone say to me that moved into town, they, they like a certain kind of olive oil or something. And they're saying, gee, I wish I could buy this certain olive oil. And so there's an example of if we have more people that are demanding that olive oil, <laughs> you know, somebody's going to supply it, right? No frills will have it or whatever. It, it, it's, it's just, it just happens that way, right? It's the way, it's the way things go. I mean, and so, so, you know, and I understand some, the whole, well, it's a small town. Yeah, it is, but we, we need growth. We absolutely need growth. And, and again, now is the time. That's the issue. Now is the time. Mm -hmm. He's Pete Eller from Riverside Realty. It's the All About Real Estate Show. And I'm sure you're open to conversations from anyone if they want to reach out to you and talk to you at your office. I give you a call and uh, we'll continue with the topic and see where we can go next. And and, hey, we're open to if you want to send us a note now and we can talk about it next week on the show, that's fine too. Or send us an email and uh, people will answer those uh, questions and we can talk about the growth of Wallaceburg and, of course, real estate. Anything else you want to add before we go? Like you said, I'm I'm open for if someone has a, a comment or a question or you know or, or if somebody disagrees with what I've said, sure. you know, I, give me a call. Like you can find my number very easily on our website, riverside.com, 
And like I say, if you if you have a comment about it or if you have a concern about it or if you have an idea, give me a call. Like I say, I'm I'm speaking to to planning, I'm speaking to the mayor, I'm speaking to our counselors, or you know, reach out to your counselors, you know, McGregor and, and Hall and and show your support of getting something going, right? Because mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they they are there's or two vice people. Versa, if you're against it. Or, you, yeah, you know exactly. I mean, like, yeah, if you don't believe in it, there, I mean, yeah. that's okay, too. Okay. So, yeah, just check out other – the other, other thing is Riversite.com. Check out – we do have – there's quite a few new listings coming up. So uh, check out Riversite.com, and you can see all of our new listings. Uh, I do have one listing I want to mention. It's uh, 70 Charles Crescent in Wallsburg. It's an absolute gorgeous house. Two story, custom built, all brick, uh, full basement, four bedrooms, two two plus two baths, um, beautiful backyard with an in ground pool and a, a pool shed, and there's even a putting green. So if you're looking for mm. a large family home, it is awesome, awesome place. It's really nice. So check that out on our uh, on our website, riversite.com, and 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 check out all our other uh, listings too. We've we had a few pop up this week, so things Good. are opening up a bit. All right, we'll talk more about those listings next week on the show. That's the all about real estate show for you. The extended version today here as we talk about the growth of Wallaceburg on ninety nine one FM.